Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Rad Dad Toolbox. It's good to have you. Thanks so much for watching the channel. Today we're going to be uh, changing the oil on a very classic Ford truck. This would apply to a lot of old Ford or Chevy trucks for that matter. And this one actually turns 50 this year, so kind of fun. So uh, this is some footage I shot a little while back, but uh, go ahead and check it out. I'll show you step-by-step -step how to do it. And uh, before we go to that, please, if you haven't considered subscribing, please consider subscribing. And if you haven't hit the like button, please pound that like button and uh, let's get to it. Today I'm gonna be taking care of my old truck. My uh, 1970 turns 50 this year, it's 2020. My 1970 F250 with a uh, 360 V8. And I wanted to start by what showing you I spent you today at my local Walmart. I got a uh, uh, five quart uh, container of 1040 weight oil and a Fram oil filter. And you can see we came in at $19.05 including tax. So this is how you take really good care of a uh, trusted friend, a, a truck that served us well in our family for years. In fact, my wife took this truck to uh, high school. So for $19.05, uh, we're gonna do an oil change. So here we go. Here's the oil I'm using today, Super Tech SAE 10 weight 40, conventional oil. It's got detergents, etc., in it to keep the engine clean. This is all this older truck will need to uh, run well. And uh, it's a little thicker oil because the tolerances back then were nowhere near what they are today. And then of course I'm using a Fram uh, PH8A uh, oil filter. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. We'll be using Rhino ramps. Again, I've got these at Walmart. They're about 25, 30 bucks. Supports the weight of this F250 just fine. And it gives us a real good height to get underneath there with this our is creeper. The creeper we're gonna, this is the creeper we're gonna be using today. It's a Pittsburgh model, Pittsburgh Automotive, which is Harbor Freight's uh, brand. It's nice and lightweight. It has a nice padded headrest. It's got a place to put your tools on both sides and uh, really fits me nice to get underneath that and truck. I really like this drain pan. I got this at Walmart. Don't remember what I paid for it. Fairly inexpensive. Just a great way to store a lot of oil off of several cars without having to run down and dump it all at once So uh, or every time. So this is a really great way to go. We're going to be using this to drain the oil. Okay, I took the uh, oil filter cap and breather off. It just connects to the side of the air filter. You can see it right there. I'm using the SUV bigger version funnel. It's actually uh, hyper tough as well. Car truck SUV quick fill funnel. It takes a lot of volume quick so you don't overflow it. We're gonna stick that there. And that's also gonna give it a vent as I open up the drain plug below to allow it to drain quickly. So uh, great funnel we're going to be using today. You definitely want to vent it so you get all the oil out. This motor's been warmed up. It's a big old traditional V8 here, 360. It's been warmed up and it's ready to drain off now. And don't ever forget the paper towels. You always need those. You'll notice I'm wearing the blue nitrile gloves. You want to use those as well. Keep your hands clean and uh, we'll go ahead and get in position underneath there with our... All right, we're going in. Scalper. Okay guys, you can see the drain plug right there. I'm shining my light on it. It uh, was a little difficult to get undone. I had to use a crescent wrench. It's dripping a little bit now, so I'm gonna go grab a set of hand pliers to uh, finish it out of the hole. So hang tight. Let it flow. Finally got that thing loose. It was a little tight in there, but she's draining nicely now. Let's go top side and take the oil filter off. Okay, the oil filter is down there. Let's see, it's on the side of the engine. This kind of gives you some access. So let's see what I can do to get that thing loose and off the block. All right, <clears throat> this oil filter mounts horizontally on the side of the block. So uh, I had to use some pretty, uh, it was really, really tight on there. So I used some of these clamps, specialized oil filter clamps. Get them for like, I don't know, eight bucks at Walmart favorite place to save money. So now I'm going to go down there now that it's loose and let's see if I can give you a view as I take this off. Okay, I'm going to try to hold the camera as I loosen this so an oil filter and take it off. I've loosened it with the big old rat or uh, wrench and I'm going to take this off right now and bring it topside. 
it's just about off. I don't know if you can see me spinning it down there. There we go. And luckily I have the cardboard down below so it catches some of that oil as it comes off. Here's, a, here's the uh, old oil filter off now and we'll go ahead and grab the new one. You can see it, I don't have a real good camera angle here. We'll pop that out. This is a little bit bigger filter, but the important part is, you can see it, is this gasket. The gasket is actually the right size to fit the housing, and that's very important. It's got a nice grip on top, so I should be able to hand tighten this in once we go in. So I'm gonna go ahead and put, okay, I'm gonna put a little grease or a little oil from the old oil filter just around the edges of this gasket to make sure it seals well. So I'm just taking a couple drips off of this and sealing it by just dabbing my glove in there and putting a nice coating of oil all the way around there. So you don't, I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of glossy now. You've got a little bit of oil on there and that'll help, uh, help it seal really well. The other thing I'm gonna do is do old school here I'm gonna fill this, even though it mounts horizontally, I'm gonna fill it about halfway, so at least there's some oil in the oil filter so that when we turn the motor over, it can uh, get oil pressure a little quicker and not run metal on metal. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little oil in this uh, filter right now. Okay, I'm using an open quart of 1540, which will not hurt this truck at all. In fact, it's really good for it. It's a diesel grade oil that has a little bit more detergents and lubricants in it for those for the cam. So we're going to fill that about halfway and I'm not exactly getting it there in the hole, but we will put, uh, oop, okay, we filled it all the way. That's okay. Again, I don't know if you can see down there, but I have filled it half full of oil. I had to dump off a little bit and now I'm just snugging it down. And with that grip on top, you can actually snug it pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and take my hands off the camera just to do one more pull with both hands. Soft turns on it, you don't want to kung fu it. Sorry, my hand is shaking here. You don't want to kung fu it, meaning you don't want to strip threads, you don't want to strip the oil pan. You want to just snug it up so that it uh, holds oil. So we're gonna go ahead and snug it up and I won't be able to film this, but hopefully you got an idea of what we're doing down here. Okay, you probably can't see me, but I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off some of this oil off the frame. and. Unfortunately, these old Fords, it just drains right across the frame. So we're gonna try to get most of those drips off. This is a 50 year old truck. So it's accumulated a fair amount of dirt. It's all original, still runs very good, which I'll show you here in a minute. And uh, we should be ready to fill here in just a second. So I'm just kind of wiping up some of the big puddles of oil on the frame and where it dripped into the oil pan or the oil collection pan. So let's go top side now and do my favorite. Let's get it full. Okay, now my favorite part, pouring fresh oil into the engine. Had to pause there for a minute, here we go. Fresh honey colored oil, the lifeblood of any engine. This is the oil that protects all the metal surfaces so that you don't have dry metal on dry metal and cause engine failure. So the very best thing you can do for any car, any truck, is to change the oil frequently. And in this case, because it's an old classic and I don't drive it a lot, it sits a lot, um, I'm only gonna, I'm gonna change it every thousand to two thousand miles and we'll make a sticker here in just a second. Okay, there we go. Okay, we'll go ahead and put the oil cap back on and then make sure that, actually let me put that on first. We're gonna slide that hose on and then put that in there. 
There we go. And now we're gonna go ahead and fire it up. Make sure there's no leaks. Okay, fire in the hole. thousand original miles on it but she's really in pretty good shape all things considered so we'll let it warm up for a few more minutes here let it sit for a minute and then we'll check the oil again okay while we're waiting for that oil to drain down into the oil pan so we can get an accurate reading we're gonna go ahead and put the date that the oil change should be done next and that'll be 2021 and because she has a lot of miles on her, I'm changing her a lot more frequently. We'll do it at 106,000. Uh, always keep track of this. Again, the best thing you can do for any car truck is change the oil. So we'll go ahead and check that and we'll be done here. Okay, now. let's go ahead and check that oil. So clean, it's hard to see sometimes on the stick. And she looks really good. She's about, needs maybe a half quart more. These uh, deep oil pans, they can hold up to six quarts. And we put about five and a half with the um, oil filter and uh, of course the fill. So let's check it one more time just to make sure we're in the right ballpark. Usually between the low mark and the high mark is one quart. Actually, it's showing perfectly full now, so maybe I didn't dip it in all the way. So it's actually perfect at about five and a half quarts. So that is an oil change on a classic 1970 F250. And, uh, and really appreciate you guys watching. Make sure, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And uh, please hit that like button. It helps the algorithm for YouTube. But appreciate you joining me. Uh, happy to answer any questions or comments uh, down in the uh, below, so make sure uh, you reach out. If you have any other questions, be happy to help in any way I can, and uh, happy motoring, and make sure you, uh, you save as much money as you can and get the most out of your vehicles. Thanks for joining me.